Okay, so last time um, we talked about heat in terms of heat transfers. So that's where we encountered the term calorimetry or calorimeter. Uh, this time we're going to take a look at heat in terms of you know, the special name that we give it enthalpy. Again, all uh, physical and chemical processes would have an associated enthalpy to them. And each of these enthalpy values would be a function of both temperature and pressure. So, um, different, uh, uh, the same reaction can, ha can be assigned different enthalpy values for different temperatures or pressures. So, um, but mostly this is because temperature and pressure have a uh, relationship as well. So, what we uh, what we're gonna try to do right now is to look at the different ways of how enthalpy is determined or how it's used. So, the different cases that uh, would come up in the use of enthalpy. So, uh, let's start with again stating that this is an extensive state function. And we emphasize the part na state function siya. So, let's just recall what it means. A state function um, is something we ascribe to uh, a property that is only dependent on um, an initial and final state. So, any process that you can think of, kahit na physical pa yun or chemical, um, would be would always be viewed in terms of its initial conditions and its final conditions. So, kapag ka state function yung property na tinitingnan natin para dun sa change na yun, sa process na yun, it means that we don't really care what happens in between. What we only need to know are the conditions or the values at the final and initial states. Okay, so, in contrast, kapag sinabi natin path, path function, um, hindi lang importante yung endpoints, hindi lang final and initial. Uh, it's also important what happens in between. So, the value, in fact, of a state function, if, if, if the state function does not care what happens in between, then kahit na anong mangyari, kahit na anong path ang kunin nung process na yun, uh, kay direct siya or true steps, same pa rin yung lalabas na value ng state function. Sa path function, um, Kapag ka iniba-iba mo yung steps in between, mag iba iba rin yung value ng path function. So, hindi siya dependent on the final and initial lang. Okay. But what the property of being a state function gives us, um, um, gives leverage to, is what's called Hess's Law. Okay. And, uh, instead of giving you a more formal um, definition of what Hess's law is, I'll just demonstrate it first with an example. Okay, so let me just erase this first. Again, the hard part of this lecture. Next time I do this, I'm probably just gonna uh, use a, a TV, a touch TV, or a touch monitor. Alright, so here's an example. Suppose that we have a reaction like this. Okay, and we want to find out what its delta H is. Okay. So, supposing na yun yung gusto natin mahanap, uh, what delta H is. And, um, okay. let me just erase this for a while kasi naka-clutter siya. Okay, what we're trying to find is the enthalpy for this reaction. Uh, note again, that in thermodynamics, so while we did not do this all the time in stoichiometry, um, in thermodynamics, it is very important that the state is uh, uh, indicated. Because like we said earlier, 
even a physical change is ascribed an enthalpy value. So, kung nagbago din yung mga state na pinagsusulat natin dun sa reaction, that would also correspond to a different total delta H of reaction. So, state changes would already be incorporated. So, mahalaga na tama yung sinusulat natin din na state. So, um, tinitingnan natin is an overall reaction that is gaseous for um, C2H4 combining with H2 to form C2H6. <coughs> Note that this is a very simple um, example because we don't need to balance the equation anymore. It's already balanced. And we want to find out um, the delta H of the reaction. Okay. Now, may notation tayong ginagamit sa delta H which I would um, elaborate on uh, in a few more in a few minutes. Uh, I'll just use it for now para kapag ka, if you try to find examples in the book, you would know right away. So, what we're trying to find is the delta H of reaction. So, I'm going to put a not uh, symbol like this in here, superscript siya, to mean uh, it's standard. I'll explain in a, in a few minutes. For now, let's just um, assume that we know what this is kasi the point of Hess's law would not require na naka-standard siya. Okay. And this is what we're trying to find out. So the first way of using or computing enthalpy using Hess's law is to state again that because it's a state function, um, whatever happens in between the initial and final state, and take note in a chemical reaction, the initial and final states are the reactants towards the product respectively. So final state, product, initial state, reaction. Okay, my dog is barking again. Um, and what happens in between uh, in this case is we can think of a set of uh, a set of step reactions that would all amount or would all sum up to this overall reaction. And that's Hess's law. So, um, just to give you an example before I explain it again. So supposing that we have Kulang na naman <laughs> C2H4 Gas So, what uh, the property of being a state function is what's being used in uh, the idea of Hess's law. So, ang sinasabi ng Hess's law is that for any given reaction, you can always think of breaking it into um, theoretical steps that um, would represent a path to getting the enthalpy of the reaction that you want. Medyo magulo. Okay, ganito na lang. If this is the total reaction na, na gusto natin mahanap, we can always imagine a set of other reactions that, if we total correctly, would lead to this reaction. So, kagaya dito, itong eh, um, um, example natin para mas madali yung maintindihan. It doesn't, this does, uh, what Hess's law says is that this is not the only way of doing it. You can always find different ways or different sets of reactions to add up to get to a reaction that you want. So, meaning na as long as thermochemical data is available, you can always imagine a reaction being the sum of different reactions. So yung sum ng different reactions na yun, you have a lot of freedom on that. Kasi, hindi dependent sa path. 
ang isang state function. So, hindi siya dependent sa so, kung paano mo in-imagine siya na, mag, na makukuha based sa sum ng different reactions. So, in this particular case, ito yung arbitrary set natin ng reactions na kapag sinum up natin, dapat magiging kagaya nito. Okay? So, that's the power of Hess's law. Okay? So, tanda na lang natin na kasi medyo mahirap isulat dito yung lahat ng symbols. Let's call this reaction 1, 2, and 3. Okay? So, yung sa first, kung hindi malino sa inyo, this is C2H6. Gas, 7O2, gas, 4CO2, gas, plus 6H2O, liquid. Let me just check that. Okay? And then, the second reaction is C2H4 gas, plus 3O2 gas, becomes, sorry, let turn the camera ako. It should be 2CO2 gas, plus 2H2O liquid. And then, in the third reaction is 2H2 gas, plus O2 gas, creates H2O liquid. So, check natin kung, kung mukhang balance itong mga ito muna. Kasi kung hindi, magkakaproblema tayo. So, sa so first, we have uh, dito 14 oxygens. Dito 8 plus 6, which is also 14. We have 6 hydrogens. Uh, sorry, may kulang. So, dito meron tayong 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens. Meron tayong 4 carbons, 4 carbons. Naman sa pangalawa, we have 2 carbons, 2 carbons, 4 hydrogens, 4 hydrogens, 6 oxygens, and 4 plus 2, 6 oxygens. So, sa pangatlo, we have, of course, tama. So, nakabalance na lahat. Yun ang mahalaga doon. Okay, kasi kung balance yung reaction na gusto natin makuha, dapat balance din yung ini-imagine nating breakdown niya. Like I said, Hess's law provides us a way of getting the enthalpy of a reaction based on the enthalpies of other reactions na kapag sinam up ay magiging yung reaction na gusto natin. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Tandaan nyo ito ah. Tandaan nyo yung coefficients. Okay. Gusto nyo i-pause. Pause nyo, tapos isulat nyo para mas madali nyo masundan. Okay, kasi kailangan ko tamburahin na naman. Alright. So, Again, mamaya ako explain ko ano yung sabihin ng math na yan. Eh. And what's it re its relation to how we write equations? Yeah, chemical equations in thermochemistry. Okay. So, nung hinahanap natin again, is a uh, enthalpy of reaction uh, that we hope we can get from a set of reactions that should theoretically sum up to it. A set of other reactions that theoretically sum up to it. Okay. So, susulat ko lang uli yung, ano, yung mga chemical reactions ha, para mas madali nyo makita. So, ang gagawin natin, okay. so, kung hindi nyo naalala, Hayaan mo yun natin kung mahuli yung aso ko. <laughs> I don't want to repeat this video. So, okay, so, so, hindi, uh, sandali ah. Hindi, apatay video mo naman. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna write the reactions again. Para meron tayong uh, full chrome dito sa problem solving natin. 7O2 gas. Thumbs. For CO2, yes, a 6H2O liquid, um, C2H4 gas, plus 3O2 gas. Malinaw pa rin ba? Uh, kung hindi, you can also comment below. Uh, maybe I'll find a better uh, marker. Kasi sa akin mukha pa naman malinaw. 2 CO2 gas. 2H2O liquid and then 2H2 gas plus O2 gas becomes 2H2O 
Okay. I just want you to take note. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Yun yung numbering natin kanina. So, tinanggal ko lang muna dito. And now, what's important here to remember is that this is our thermochemical data. Which means na binabase natin yung enthalpy nung gusto natin hanapin reaction yung kanina. Yung C2H4 plus H2 becomes C2H6. Kaya try natin hanapin yung enthalpy niya based sa sum ng enthalpies nito mga reaction na to. So, dapat yung enthalpies nito given. So, ganun yung mangyayari din sa exam. Um, you try to find the enthalpy of a reaction, the unknown enthalpy of a reaction based on the sum of enthalpies ng step reactions na ini-imagine natin would lead to the reaction that we want. So, dapat given yung data ng delta H na to. And I'm just gonna do an abbreviation na 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. Okay. Now, if we're trying to find uh, a sum na ang dapat lalabas C2H4 gas plus H2 becomes C2H6. Diba? Yun yung gusto natin makita. Then, dapat, itong C2H6 na to ay hindi nasa reactant side, kundi dapat nasa product side siya. Kasi yun yung gusto natin overall reaction. Eh. Ito, tama lang. Kasi talagang dun sa gusto natin overall reaction, yung sinulat ko kanina, na dapat yung C2H4 nasa reactant side talaga. Okay? So, pero ito dapat nasa product side. So, anong gagawin natin? Para mapunta ito sa product side, kailangan i-multiply natin. So, ito yung ma-imagine nyo. Di ba sinabi ko last time, para sa phase change, pag binago mo yung direction, mababago yung sign ng enthalpy. Ganon din sa reactions. So, pagka binago natin yung positions na, pinagpalit natin yung positions ng product and reactants, binaliktad natin, mapupunta dito sa side na to, sa reactant side, ang CO2 and H2O, sa product side, ang C2H6 and 7O2, then yung enthalpy nito, magig ma mamultiply by negative 1. Magpapalit. Diba? So, kumbaga ba, kapag sinulat ko, dapat ito yung nandito na. So, pag, imagine niyo muna, kapag palit na yun. Okay, so, isulat ko na lang dito. So, 4 CO2 gas plus 6 H2O liquid becomes 2 C2H6 gas plus 7O2 gas. So, binaliktad na natin yung first. Ngayon yung makikita nyo. Okay? Binaliktad ko ulit dahil yung overall reaction na gusto natin dapat nasa product side yung C2H6. Second, yung second na reaction, hindi na natin kailangang balikta rin kasi alam natin yung overall reaction na gusto natin nasa reactant side talaga ang C2H4. So, I'm just gonna write it down. Okay. And then the last part, di ba, kung naalala nga uli equation, yung gusto natin makuha na ng delta H, nasa reactant side din yung H2. So, tama lang din. So, ibaba ko lang din uli. Okay. Alright. So, tama na yung mga positions nung gusto natin. Ang problema lang natin, yung mga hindi natin kailangan, nandun pa rin. So, paano natin tatanggalin yun? We take note na, again, since extensive ang delta H, bawat delta H nito mga to, or bawat reaction rather, pwede natin i-multiply with another constant para maiba yung coefficients ng bawat isa. Diba? So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng extensivity. Uh, dahil extensive ang number of moles, then, di ba? Bawat coefficient dito sa isang balanced chemical equation is the number of moles of each compound necessary for the reaction to proceed. Um, so, pwede natin uh, baguhin yung coefficients by multiplying with a constant and if we take a look, diba? kanina sinabi natin, dun sa overall reaction, ano yung coefficient ng C2H4? 1. 1 siya, di ba? Yung coefficient ng H2, 1 din. So, therefore, dun sa third na reaction natin, kailangan natin mag-multiply ng 1 half. Tama ba? So, pag multiply mo by 1 half, matatanggal tong 2, magiging 1 half ito, mas matatanggal tong ito. Yan. Diba? 
sama ba o oh, tama yan okay di ba okay so kapag again pag binultiply to ng one half tama na eh, magiging coefficient tong h2 dun sa overall reaction na gusto natin tama na rin to kasi alam natin na ang coefficient ng c to h4 ay 1 Ito nga yung pang, ito nga yung nag-iisang question na hindi pa natin na tinitingnan. Tandaan na lang natin ulit na dun sa overall reaction, ano yung coefficient ng C286? It's also 1. And so, we also need to multiply multiply this by 1 half. Although, since binaliktad ko siya, di ba? Isasama ko na rin yung effect na yun, yung pagbaliktad, by placing a negative sign. Oh, hindi, hindi pala. Una pala, hindi tati pwede lagyan negative. Multiply ito yung one half, pero yung una talaga nangyari, dito ko na lang isusulat. We multiply this by negative one. Okay. Kasi, kailangan natin ipunta yung C to H6 sa product side. So, ginawa muna natin yun. Inip muna natin yung first na reaction. Tapos, may multiply natin by one half. You could have done a different way. Na parang, instead, na isulat ko this way, I would have multiplied, I would have simply multiplied this equation here instead of negative 1. Ang gawin ko na kaagad negative 1 half. So that's another way. Hiwalay ko lang dito kasi dalawa yung nangyari talaga sa first na equation. Nabaliktad, as i-divide natin by 1 half para matanggal yung coefficient na 2 sa C286. Okay? Hindi na. So, binaliktad, multiply by 1 half. Either you write it this way, or dito pa lang, i-multiply mo na ng negative 1 half. Alright. So, kapag nangyari yun, anong makikita natin effect niya? Okay? So, ang ano ulit mga gusto natin tanggalin dito, yung hindi natin kailangan is CO2, H2O, and O2. Wala siya dun sa overall reaction na gusto natin. So, tingnan natin kung naka matatanggal natin siya. Unahin natin ang um, H2O. Kasi, Mukhang madali siya eh. So, one half nito would just be one. So, meron kang isang H2O sa product side dito. Dalawang H2O sa product side dito. So, meron ka ng three H2Os sa product side. Ano? Isang H2O dito. Kasi one half yan. At dalawang H2O dito. Would give three H2O sa product side. Pero dito sa first equation, first chemical equation, ilan yung H2O? That's six times one half. So, meron ka na ng 3H2O sa reactant side. Kapag ang dalawang compound ay nasa magkabilang side ng chemical equation, makakancel mo na siya. So, cancel na ang H2O. Ayan. Tingnan naman natin ngayon ang CO2. Kasi mo madali uli siya. Pag multiply mo by 1 half yan, magiging 2 carbon dioxide na siya. Okay, sorry, sinek pa lang. Huwag tumatakbo pa rin. Okay, 2 carbon dioxide na siya, di ba? So, meron kang 2 carbon dioxide sa reactant side. Dito sa first equation. Sa second equation naman, meron kang dalawang carbon dioxide. Sa product side naman. Third equation, wala kang carbon dioxide. Pero since dito pa lang, meron ka ng 2 carbon dioxide sa product. Dito, 2 carbon dioxide sa reactant. Cancel na rin siya. Tandaan nyo ha, dahil yun sa mga pinultiply natin factor. Ha? Okay. So, yung last is yung oxygen. Okay. So, ito. Kailangan lang na maalala yung paano mag-add ng fractions. Eh. So, yung sa una is 7 halves. Okay. Tama ba? So, that's 7 divided by 2. Sa product side. Pero dito sa dalawang equations na to, sa second and third, you would have 3 plus 1 half. So, 3 and 1 half siya. Which is 3 plus 1 half pala rather. So, what is 3 plus 1 half? Minus 1 half, 2. So, sulat ko lang dito ah. Kasi ganun yung lalabas, di ba? 3 oxygens plus 1 half oxygen. Tapos dito 7 halves na oxygen. Pero tama lang kasi ang 3 plus 1 half, kung naalala nyo yung fractions nyo, that's multiply dito, tapos i-add. Then that's 6 plus 1 over 2, which is 7 halves. And so, in essence, matatanggal mo rin ng O2. And so, kompleto na. Okay? 
by doing these operations to the equations that we have na given, we effectively sum them up to get us to the equation that we want, which is C2H4 plus H2 becomes C2H6. Okay? So, let me just erase this again. So, kailangan ulit natin na makita na ano. Tandaan nyo nangyari ha. Yung sa una, pinaghiwalay ko lang. Pero, parang lumabas na for the first equation, we multiply by negative 1 half. For the second equation, we simply let it as is. So, it's like multiplying by 1. And then, in the third equation, we multiply by 1 half. And then, nalaman natin na tama yung mga pinang-multiply natin by looking at all of the compounds that we don't need in the reaction that we want. And as it turns out, lahat sila ng hindi natin kailangan ay makakancel out. Okay, so, yun yung mahalaga doon. Mahalaman nyo kung tama yung ginagawa nyo na pag-sum up, kung na-cancel out nyo lahat ng hindi nyo kailangan. Pag hindi nyo siya na-cancel, meron kayong mali doon sa factor. Okay? So, kung naalala nyo yung nangyari, lumudumi na yung board. Okay. So, parang lumalabas, again, yung numbers 1, 2, 3, parang lumalabas na yun. Ah, diba? Negative 1 half yung sa first equation. Times 1 yung sa second. Times 1 half yung sa third. And kung naalala yung sinabi ko tungkol sa enthalpy at saka sa chemical reactions or kaya siya extensive or ano yung ibig sabihin ng extensive siya. Kung ano yung ginawa mong pang multiply dun sa chemical equation, yun din yung magiging effect dun sa delta H niya. Kasi extensive eh. So therefore, yung nangyari sa first na delta H, delta H1 being yung uh, enthalpy ng first na reaction. I'm just gonna put the not in there kasi yun din nasa example ko. And I'm gonna explain again later what this means. Yung first na delta H, multiply natin ng neg dapat i-multiply din ng negative one half. Yung second na delta H ay i-multiply lang by one. And yung third na delta H ay i-multiply by one half. And if we do this, ito yung given sa inyo, yan yung mga given, then that should give you delta H of the reaction. And that's how simple the first case of Hess's law is. Now again, Hess's law is a way of, for you to find an unknown enthalpy for a reaction based on how you imagine it to be following a certain set of steps. So, yung steps natin dito, yun, yung in-imagine natin tatlong reaction na yun na sinab up natin. Okay. okay. So, ganyan lang yung palagi. So, sa exam, given kayo ng isang reaction, hanapan nyo ng enthalpy, given ang isang set ng reactions na pwede nyo isum up to get to the reaction that you want. Whatever factor you multiply the reactions to, yung sinasum up mo, should be the same factor that you multiply to sa corresponding enthalpy nila. And then just sum them up. Sum up mo kasi extensive eh. Sum up mo kasi state function. So, yung ibibigay ko sa inyong example is the same na binigay ko dito except na meron na yung values na tumatang. Again, that would be posted in my Facebook account. Uh, if it's not posted there, I um, invite you to if you don't know what the Facebook account is, a Facebook group page is, it's Chem Six Lim's Chem Sixteen Depot. Right. Hey, so now, nung nakita na natin yung example ng Hesis ko, I'll just comment again on why I keep putting yung not in there. Bakit Delta H not? Instead of just writing delta H, ha, kasi you can always do that. You can write delta H as is or you can put a not. Yung not, yun yung ibig sabihin nung gano'n, yung meron yan. Delta H not. Okay? Bakit yung sinusulat na ganyan? It is used to denote, so this thing here, is used to denote that it's taken at standard conditions. Okay? Diba sinabi ko sa inyo, there are different enthalpies 
for different temperatures. So kapag ka, if you're talking about a particular temperature, you get a specific uh, value or particular value for a corresponding value for the for that uh, for the enthalpy at that temperature. So pag binago mo yung temperature, magbabago din yung corresponding na enthalpy. So in this case, yung temperature na tinatingnan natin is in the standard condition. So anong sabihin noon? That's 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere, and solutions, if there are any inside the chemical reaction na kung saan natin ina-associate yung delta H, solutions are at one molar concentration. That's what we mean by standard condition. So, pero ang pinaka-importante dyan, ito, 25 degrees, that's what we mean when we say not. So, all of the delta H's na I I used in the previous example indicate that they have been uh, measured at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. Okay? So, special yung ibig sabihin nito na standard eh, na conditions kasi it doesn't just mean that the enthalpies were measured at standard conditions but it also means that all of the compounds or elements inside the chemical reaction uh, represented by the delta H by its delta H must also be in the state uh, must also be in its standard state so ano yung sabihin nun kapag yung enthalpy measure mo at 25 degrees para sa isang chemical reaction lahat ng compounds dun sa chemical reaction must be stated in a physical state niya at 25 degrees and one atmosphere so yun yung sabihin ng standard so, dapat lahat ng nakalistang compounds nasa standard state din. Meaning na, kung ang standard state, kunyari, ng oxygen at 25 degrees ay gas, hindi mo pwedeng isulat dun sa chemical equation na yung oxygen is liquid kung ginagamit mo yung symbol na not. Okay? Yan yung ibig sabihin nun. Okay? Pero, syempre, it's, more, it's the more specific case. And in general, in, in thermodynamic literature, this has um, this has only it only has meaning if you understand exactly what the pressure is. So, hindi talaga temperature yung pinagbabasa yung pressure. Anyway, sa chem 16, ito yung iso natin pagbasa So again, dito, sinasabi ko lang na kung isa din sa mga reactants or products is solution, then yung standard state nun must be at one molar concentration. Okay, so pag binago-bago mo yung mga state, Mag-iba rin dapat yung delta H at hindi na siya standard. All right. So bakit siya importante na sinusulat natin ng ganyan? Because that is precisely what we need when we talk about um Hess's law in another way. So I'm just going to use a different example uh, para naman kahit pa paano may use tayo ng mga coefficients so kung kunyari burning ng C2H4 gas so pag sinunog natin siya kailangan combine with oxygen gas and then it becomes CO2 gas plus H2O liquid so note but how I've written it here is, implies that the enthalpy must have been measured at standard state. Why? Because at standard state, 25 degrees in one atmosphere, CO2 is a gas, water is a liquid, O2 is a gas, and ethane is a gas. Ethylene. Or ethene. Okay? So, ito yung reaction kunyari, no? Ang delta H not niya is delta H not reaction. Diba, pinakita natin kanina, one way to find this delta H not reaction is to, fig, is to find a set of other reactions that can add up to this. Kung ano hinahanapan natin delta H. Another way is to imagine that what we're adding are all of the delta H's of formation for 